Hello! So, in this video, we're going to go through all the code for color. So, as always, all the code is available on GitHub, link in the description below. So, the first thing we do here is we define the color structure, and it needs to store three bits of data, the, the three color components, the red, the green, and the blue. Uh, we shorten it just to RGB, um, just for ease of use, um, or rather speed of typing. Um, so we have uh, three constructors for this. We have a, a default constructor, which is just a black. We have a color that takes a single float. And what this does is it gives us a gray color or of the brightness we put in. So a zero is a black, one gives you a white, and others give you anything in between. Um, after that, we have the, the sort of standard uh, constructor that just takes the given values and copies them into the, the variables. So we also have a deconstructor, which doesn't do anything. Um, and we give it the clamp and apply gamma correction functions. So what clamp does is it will make sure that all of the components are within a certain range. So we need to do this when we save the image to a file, because ultimately we can only save out a certain range, and by clamping it, we avoid any messy overflow errors. The reasons for the gamma correction I explained in the previous video. It's to allow more control over where the detail is in the light or dark parts of the image, and also to make it look uh, more correct um, on certain screens. So, as with the vectors, we also have operators we can use for the mixing, so this is the equals, uh, just for copying over, plus equals and times equals are used for uh, mixing colors, and we also have the uh, operators that apply to two different colors for the same thing, uh, plus and times. So I won't go into all the operators in detail, they're very simple, uh, but we will look at the code for the, uh, the gamma correction function. So all this does is it multiplies each component by the exposure value first, and then raises it to the power of the uh, the gamma that's given. Um, so now with this uh, color class, we can go and improve our, our image to use color now. Uh, so this is exciting, but it means we need to put a little thought into the save image function. So we're actually going to go and have a look at that now. So I won't go in too much into the detail of converting it into the this specific format, but I, we will look at what we do with each color. So firstly, we create a temporary color variable. So we're not actually editing the image at all. And we want to copy uh, the specific uh, pixel that we want. We then apply the gamma correction first, because we want to make use of the full stored range of color in this one. If we clamp before we do this, then changing the exposure isn't going to work properly. So we then clamp after we've done the gamma correction. And then to fill in the actual image data, all we do is take the relevant component and multiply by 255. Um, that's because this specific image format does use 0 to 255 uh, range for its color storage. But we can't just update the image. We have to get all the colors we want from somewhere. So we've also gone and updated the intersection struct to take a color now. So it's an extra piece of information that the struct stores about the intersection. And now that we can store that, we also need to update the shapes. So both the plane now has a color and the sphere now has a color and their constructors have been updated to allow a color to be passed in. And then we also need to go and update their intersect functions for both the plane and the sphere. So these both just now add, store their own color into the intersection. That's all that's changed here. And so now finally, the ray trace function has been updated as well. This now takes a color value instead of just a float, and it sets the current pixel to be the color from the intersection, if it did intersect. Otherwise, it just sets it to a black. 
So while there's nothing really that complicated uh, going on in terms of the code here, we have had to go through a lot of the stuff we've already written and make small changes to, uh, to get the color working. But doing that, we now get this image. So it's still not really 3D, or at least it doesn't look 3D. But at least you can now tell apart the objects. Um, and so in the next video, we're going to start looking at actually making this look like a th the 3D image that it is. Um, so we'll start talking about lighting and how we can calculate that. So thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you then, and goodbye.